Hi guys, we're at Funimation Studios in Dallas, Texas. I'm Steven. And I'm Sully. And we're Team SNS. And we are here with Eric Vale, Maxie Whitehead, and Christopher Bevins. So how did you get into voice acting? As an actor, I started acting when I was uh, about 12. Continued it up through college and auditioned for the role of Trunks on Dragon Ball Z. Then uh, I guess it was about three weeks later uh, after that audition, I, I booked the role and started recording like the next day. I um, was at a party with a friend that uh, I had done a stage show with. He said that they were getting ready to audition for a anime version of Romeo and Juliet and wanted me to come and audition and got cast as Antonio and have pretty much been up here ever since. I started at Funimation as a uh, ADR recording engineer and uh, just from being around, you know, in those early days, it, it was, uh, there were occasions where they would say, hey, uh, get in the booth and go bark like a dog or, you know, die as Soldier B. Uh, so that's kind of how I got my start is just being around and being here and absorbing all of uh, everything I could learn from uh, all the other actors and directors up here. That was it. If you can do it without the breath in the middle, that will nail down the timing. Kay. Great read. No freaking way. I don't want to get wrapped up with some dude who just looks like he attracts trouble. Everyone come quick! Some morons about to jump off the roof! Voice acting is very liberating in a lot of ways because you don't um, have the constraints of your own body. There are certain things that, you know, I will never be cast as because I am, I look the way that I do, but that doesn't happen with voiceover. Here we go. I'll go if you guys go. Look at that, one taker. On stage, you get to use everything and on, f you know, your whole body, your, your whole face. But on a microphone, you don't get to use anything but your voice. So you've got to learn to use your facial expressions and your body, but through your voice. Hey, yo! Icarus, you think you could knock out the rest of this equation for me? Oh yeah, that's the one, for sure. Awesome. What would you say is the main difference between voice acting for American animation and voice acting for Japanese anime? There are different vocal archetypes between Japan and America. American audiences have grown up with cartoons since, you know, the Warner Brothers, you know, Looney Tunes days. So the American audiences have come, become accustomed to certain types of voices for certain types of characters. Uh, in Japan, it's the exact same thing, only they have different archetypes. So that's why uh, an, a monster in the Japanese version may sound completely different from a monster in an American version, because we have a different concept of what that monster should sound like. What I need to tell you first is uh, you're going to see an, an ellipses right in the middle of the line, right there. Mm -hmm. That means that there's a pause in the flaps. That means that he's going to stop talking for a second. So, when you get on mic, when you get to that, you're going to stop talking for just a second. So, um, I'll give it a shot first. Cool. And show. Yeah. Right. You see how it goes? Maybe it's refracting light somehow or hiding behind the clouds. Its whole nature remains a mystery to us as of now. Look pretty good. All right, cool. You want to All right. Now, Sweet. Now Let's it's Sully's turn. So, now we'll give it a go. Remember, go on where the fourth beep would be. Maybe it's refracting light somehow, or hiding behind the clouds. Its whole nature remains a... Uh, Maybe it's refracting light somehow, or hiding beneath the clouds. Its whole nature re remains a mystery to us as of now. Man, that last part is... Puh, tongue twister. Yeah. yeah. Its whole nature... Rem the, its whole nature remains a, a mystery to us as of now. Its whole nature remains a... The remains, 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 remains. All right, I got it. Its whole nature remains a mystery to us as of now. Maybe it's refracting light somehow or hiding behind the clouds. Its whole nature remains a mystery to us as of now. Great timing, great timing. There you go. And that's how it's done, sir. Team SNS here with Justin Cook, the director of production for Funimation. Could you name some of the projects you've worked on? 
Yeah, well, over the last 10 years, the list would be, uh, I guess, for the first part, I worked on Dragon Ball Z is what I came in on, then Dragon Ball, Yu Yu Hakusho, as mentioned, Fruits Basket, Kitty Grade. At that point, I was pulled out of directing and began producing. So from there forward, every title from Full Metal Alchemist, Mushishi, the list goes on and on. So everything that's come through Funimation's door, I've had a, a hand in, in working on or producing. What are some characteristics you find appealing in Japanese anime that you don't really see in Western cartoons? I like an ongoing story, um, as opposed to something wrapping up in 20 minutes that feels a lot like a sitcom. And with Japanese animation, there's an ongoing storyline that will sometimes spread, of course, in the case of Yu Yu Hakusho, 112 episodes, or with Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball and GT, 500 plus episodes. And then the themes that are addressed in each of the shows, uh, courage, pride, you know, pride before the fall, all of these kind of themes are what they heavily touch on in a lot of animes, uh, these more human drama. And I think that's much more appealing, uh, just, at least to me. Uh, what advice would you give for aspiring voice actors or anyone else who wants to get into the anime dubbing industry? Don't try to concentrate on imitating voices you might hear on different animes that you that you enjoy and trying to make a, a small recording of that to send in. Actually establish yourself as an actor. And once you do that, then you'll have some materials to really put together a, a demo that will impress. All right, this is Team SNS uh, in Dallas, Texas with Justin Cook, the director of production. Justin, it's been a pleasure. It's been a great pleasure to meet with both of you.